Hey Clayburn, it's Friday. This week I thought I'd talk about how I'm using Bricklink Studio to make Lego comic strips. So I have these two police officers that are having a conversation, and I have this prisoner holding a big red phone. Both of these sets are using the same backdrop. I just copied and pasted it and changed a few floor pieces based on how many minifigs there were. In order to make a comic strip, I need to export a few images, so I'm just going to set that up really quick. I'm using a 4-3 ratio because I want space for the speech bubble at the top, and you can see all my other settings on the side. One thing I learned recently is that Brick's Link Studio has a render queue, which allows you to render more than one image at a time. So when you click Add to Queue, it adds the image to the top, like you see happen here. And then it's added with any other images you want to make, where typically you'd click Render to create the image immediately. Instead, you can go over and click Render Queue to render all of them at once. So I have my queue set up here with the images I need for my comic strip, and it's going to take a while to render them, so I'll render these and then come back when they're done. Now that I have the a few images, I can drop them into GIMP to do some editing. I don't know a ton about GIMP, but I do know that I don't want to edit the image layer directly, so I'm going to create a new layer with all the default settings. Then I can just select a big box and color it white. Before you can do anything else, after you select, you have to unselect because GIMP only lets you draw in selected spaces. Then we can use a pencil, which I've decreased to width 2, and draw a straight line by holding shift. I'm just going to draw a little triangle so we know who is speaking, and like before, I'll color it in in white. Now that we have a speech bubble, we can insert some text. The default color for fonts is white, so when I type it, you can't see it. I have to select all by pressing Ctrl A and then update the color to black so it's visible against the speech bubble. And finally, we have to save and export. The more important step for my purposes is exporting since GIMP saves in some weird XCF format. And when exporting, I have to update the name of the file it saves to because it is saving with the same name as the original picture and I don't want to overwrite it in case I need to go back. Otherwise, I'm going to use all of the default settings again. Exporting takes a little bit of time just like rendering, but when we're done, we have a pretty nice completed frame for our comic. Maybe if you had more patience than me, this line would come out a little less jagged, but otherwise everything looks pretty good. I did all of the others the same way, so here you can see all the images for the comic. It's just a little pun. Well, Claiborne, that's it from me this week. I'll see you on Tuesday, and I hope you have a great weekend.